So, uh, so yeah, my name is Michel Paquet. I am a teacher here at Vanier College, uh, teaching in the computer science department. Uh, and uh, I have completed my PhD in computer science also at Carleton University uh, with uh, Mohamed. Uh, we were actually, I, I believe, maybe neighbors uh, in the lab, not too sure, yeah. because he was always in my lab, well, once in a while, not always. <laughs> um, well, so today uh, I will be giving a presentation about um, some work that I did over in uh, Greece uh, this past summer uh, I decided not to take a vacation instead I decided to go work um, for three weeks uh, with a colleague in Greece uh, in order to do some research um, so uh, this uh, presentation is meant to be the proof that I actually worked instead of just taking a vacation and uh, have a fun time on the beach so the presentation is about black hole search in computer networks uh, I'll explain all about what black hole search means. Uh, it's actually a, a very nice uh, term that was coined by a colleague of mine, uh, Mr. Stefan Dobrev. He talked about black holes a little while ago. Uh, we like to give cool names to problems so that people like to follow them. Uh, really what a black hole is, is just a, a dead computer in the network, but it's still very important to find it. Um, so uh, without further ado, um, I'll be discussing uh, basically the motivation behind this problem. Uh, it's both network issues and also uh, dangerous places. Uh, what I mean by this is that uh, it's not true that this uh, problem uh, and the solution that we'll be presenting only applies to uh, computer networks. Now, this idea also applies to actual uh, search and rescue and uh, uh, other topics like that, uh, trying to explore regions that might be dangerous uh, in some uh, geographical area. Um, so uh, keep that in mind as I'm going along. I'll try to give you some intuition uh, that may make, uh, may make you think that this is the case. Um, and But we'll still keep it in the context of uh, computer networks. Uh, okay, so uh, basically uh, com communication uh, networks, they're normally a set of uh, We'll say stations that relay information. They might be network equipment, or they might be computer net, uh, computers themselves. Uh, for instance, this computer is inside a network right now. Um, and uh, when some of the equipment malfunction, basically what they can do is, one thing they can do is stop transmitting information altogether. Uh, they can still receive information, but sometimes they might just simply malfunction and stop transmitting, relaying the messages correctly. And in this case, um, what happens to messages, they just get lost, like just getting sucked into a black hole. This is what we call a black hole in a network, all right? Uh, or maybe uh, we want to uh, uh, think about this as a real black hole that's being created by some uh, accelerating particle accelerator over in Belgium, I think, the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, this might be the case in the future, as uh, some people uh, have been uh, so the idea is that we want to locate this black hole inside the network in a very efficient way. Uh, so we have here uh, some type of network, we call this a torus, I'll explain it in a few minutes. And uh, there is a problem inside this network, messages are being lost, and we wish to find this efficiently. We don't want to lose too many messages, we want to lose just a few messages and then have it be done. Uh, we repair the network, the idea is to repair the network, remove this equipment from the network. Um, so what we're going to be using for this task is what we call mobile agents. Mobile agents, they're smart messages. Uh, we're used to thinking of messages we transmit on networks as just information. Uh, now, messages can also contain a payload of actual programs, programs that can run on machines in a specific environment. So this is what mobile agents are. Mobile agents, they are messages that contain programs, basically that can run on a computer. Uh, these are the theoretical, by the way. There is no uh, commercial system that I know of right now. And what we want to do, basically, is use these theoretical mobile agents uh, such that the messages are going to stay very small. So we want to have a small program. We want the program to use very little memory. We want this to, uh, to run, basically, to be transmittable on the network very fast in one very small message. That's going to be the idea. So you can think of mobile agents as basically robots. That's what they are. They are exactly analogous to robots that are walking around in a city. The only difference is that they're, they don't have a shape or a form. They're just information. 
and the city is a network. But it is very analogous to having robots walk around a playing field, basically. Our little robots here, we're going to try to make them locate the black hole. Now, they're walking around the robots, but they are very limited beings. They cannot see anything except where they are. So when they are at a certain computer equipment, what they can see is the environment in that equipment. They don't know anything about the neighbors. They don't know anything about what's happening around them. They have a very limited view. What they can do, however, is they can leave what we call a few pebbles. Just a few stones, just like, uh, was it, was it uh, Hansel and Gretel Red walking crumbs. around, breadcrumbs? Well, yeah, these are smarter. They're going to leave pebbles so that nobody eats the pebbles. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, now, they don't have anything like a network map. They don't know the environment they're walking. The only thing they know is what is right there. And they have no ability that will enable them to actually start mapping the network because they have very small memory. To be able to map a network would require very large amounts of memory. They just have what we call a few bits of memory. That's all they have. Okay. So the network we're going to be discussing is very analogous to a city. So uh, this is uh, meant to be uh, central Manhattan. Um, and uh, you, know, you see that there's, you know, it's a very uh, grid-like city. There's uh, horizontal and vertical streets. Uh, there is a theoretical network that resembles this uh, basically, it's called a torus, and the idea is that we have the streets uh, when you start at one end and you reach the other end, well, you start at one end again, and you just loop back, back, back through the network. For computer networks, that's very simple to implement. All we need to do is actually connect two stations with a wire, and what we get is this type of network, where we have stations connected together, and then the endpoints, again, connected together. Okay. I've just drawn a few of these circular connections, but you can assume them throughout the entire network. The idea is that a message can be transmitted this way, and then keep going this way over and over again. Now, why are we actually using this type of network? The idea is to actually have this uh, application also work for uh, the real world. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, you don't normally loop uh, through a city, but on the entire planet, you might actually do over and over again on a sphere. The same thing applies. Okay, so what is the problem exactly? What we wish to do is we wish to find one black hole uh, in the network, and the question is how many agents, each carrying how many pebbles? That's the idea. We want to minimize the number of agents and the number of pebbles, such that we can find this black hole. Now, specifically, we're going to use a torus for this problem. We wish to have very little memory, a very few bits of memory, a very small program. We wish to use a very finite state machine. So just a few decisions are going to be necessary to make this work. And the mobile agents, they're going to start all over the network. We can't assume they ever meet. Because, well, that's the nature of things. Uh, network uh, messages may be spontaneously created by computers all over the network that think they have their messages lost. And well, basically, these mobile agents, these little robots, they're going to be walking around and they have no common sense of direction. They don't know what is left or right. They only have some type of direction in the sense that one robot can say, well, I'm going that way and he can keep going that way if he wants to go that way. But he doesn't know what that way is to the other robot. So they don't have a common uh, compass. So, uh, the first result that we got for this is an impossibility result. We found that it's not possible in this context to solve the problem with less than five robots or five mobile agents. So, the proof for this, uh, everyone can understand very clearly. Uh, you have four robots surrounding the black hole and they take a step and fall into the black hole. You certainly need to have a fifth robot to find out what happened. That's pretty straightforward, okay? Uh, now, uh, let's talk about possible uh, solutions. Yeah, robot number five is lonely. He's wondering what's happening right now. All right. So the solution that we use, we're going to drop pebbles. And we're going to be very careful. Every time our mobile agent is going to want to walk forward, he is going to drop a pebble before walking forward, uh, such that he leaves a symbol that says he was here. And if he dies, he died 
just in one of the neighboring nodes, one of the neighboring computers. So the robot starts by dropping a pebble, then he moves right, then if he doesn't die, he goes back, he takes his pebble and moves right again. And that's one step. Now, I'm not gonna repeat this throughout uh, the entire presentation, but you can think of the pebble just like a, a ball in a chain that's trailing behind the robot by one computer, okay? So, uh, if these robots were to all move into the black hole at the same time or at some point during the search from different directions, they would leave pebbles all around the black hole that would indicate that something was wrong. So later, at some point, another robot can say, there is a black hole adjacent to me. So the algorithm goes like this, because in order to make this work, we have to actually explore the entire network. We're gonna need to have a few pebbles. Actually, we're gonna need three pebbles to walk through the network. Well, in this algorithm, we need three pebbles. Each robot is going to have three pebbles. Uh, the idea is that the robots, they leave two pebbles when they start walking, and then they walk around the loop. They walk on the same street until they meet basically an even number of pebbles five times. Once they meet an even number of pebbles five times, what they do is they say, I'm gonna take the two pebbles and I'm gonna move to the next ring. So in other words, they leave two pebbles and then they start walking in the direction and they go around and around and around until they meet their pebbles five times. Uh, why five times? Well, it's possible they all start in the same ring. We want to make sure that the ring is completely explored. Uh, this, is, uh, this is just uh, for mathematical concerns. Um, now, everything is going to keep going the same way until they basically meet an odd number of pebbles. Something like one, like three, like five pebbles. So the process starts like this. The rest of the presentation is just images. So if you uh, want to see the images, uh, there's not any more text, you know, just a little bit of text, just a few letters. So the robots start. They just start the algorithm right now. They drop two pebbles, and they try to walk forward. So when they walk forward, they drop one pebble in back of them. They walk forward, and then they're going to go back, get that pebble, and walk forward, and so on and so forth. They have this pebble that's always trailing behind them, basically. So you see there's three pebbles. Uh, why three pebbles? Because if it so happened that they died in a black hole right after starting this algorithm, it's gonna be possible to find them now. So they keep walking, they keep walking, and at some point there's a, actually one who's gonna see a set of two pebbles five times. So he's gonna say this is the fifth time. I proceed downwards, he takes his two pebbles, and then he proceeds downwards. Uh, this is the robot in question. And this continues over and over again. The robots just keep walking that way until at least at some point one of them is actually going to fall into the black hole. Yes, uh, to find the black <coughs> hole there has to be one of them that is a kamikaze. No choice, okay? So uh, one robot is uh, going to die in this black hole and what is going to be the result of that? I am going to find one pebble at this station right next to the black hole. This is going to be a very clear indication that there exists a black hole right next to this node. So by some luck, it's going to happen that at some point, some robot is going to find this pebble. Now, I have five robots. I have four neighbors. So I guarantee you that at least one robot is going to find one pebble before falling into a black hole. Okay? So here comes that robot. He finds the pebble. There's some other robot coming in uh, by some chance who's gonna fall and die again. Uh, but this robot here, he sees one pebble and he thinks, I am adjacent to a black hole. So now there must be a plan to find this black hole and to actually say, okay, we have to take this computer out of the system. So the little robot is thinking. He's thinking, what shall I do to make sure I don't fall into this black hole? and to ensure that at least one of us five finds the black hole and declares the black hole. So when he sees the rock, uh, he actually came in from, uh, uh, in the uh, diagram A, he came in from uh, this node here uh, to the right. 
So he knows that the black hole is adjacent to him, but not back of him, otherwise he'd be dead already. So what he does, he tries to basically circumvent the black holes, and then he's going to test from some other direction if he can die in the black hole. So he tests if this is the black hole, if that is the black hole. And if neither of these two nodes are the black hole, he knows for sure that the third one is the black hole. Okay. But along the way, he's going to be a bit smarter even. Instead of just walking around the black hole and trying to uh, throw himself inside, he's going to say, well, if I find a pebble along this path, it means that the black hole is indeed that node that I was trying to test. So in other words, he found this pebble first. And then he's walking, he finds this pebble. Well, he knows that only that node could be the black hole. Because that node and this node, they are both adjacent to these two pebbles. However, he came from this one, so obviously that was not the case. Or he, if he finds a pebble over here on top of before falling into the black hole, the same situation applies. And the same situation applies when he is exploring the node which was below the pebble. Otherwise, he declares that this right here is the black hole. So that's the short version of how this algorithm works. So, Mr. Robot is here, he is looking, and he sees this pebble, and what he says is, I am going to walk around and test if this node and that node, if these are the black hole. And he tests and he finds that they are not the black hole for the top one. And neither is the bottom one. Therefore, he declares that basically the one in front is the black hole. Now, the net result of this is that Mr. Robot says, this is a bad computer. We can disconnect this computer from the, from the entire network. And now what we did effectively is we healed the network. We have prevented it from further leaks. No more messages will be lost. So, can this be done with less than five agents? The answer is no. However, we still ask the question, is there one algorithm that can do this with five agents, but with less than three pebbles? Well, we think that it's possible to do this with two pebbles. However, we do not have a proof for this. And this is where any student who wants to play games with pebbles and with robots can actually contribute to this problem. Um, so actually smart ideas are born from imagination and this was a very fun project to work on uh, because uh, we were, uh, uh, it was possible to work uh, on this project uh, uh, at the beach as well. Uh, because there's lots of pebbles on beaches. As you know. uh, and so I'm pretty sure that students are proficient at uh, working on the beach with sand and pebbles as well. Uh, so thank you very much. That was my presentation.